Hello and welcome to another video where today I'll be taking you through some examples of how to use pivot tables and how to take that information and put it into a pivot chart. So let's swap over to the spreadsheet and have a look at some examples. So we're back to our same fictitious scenario today, but this time we're looking at pivot tables and pivot charts. Now pivot tables are a really useful way of organizing data, analyzing data, and basically manipulating how you want to see it in a really easy way. So we can use formulas to do some of what pivot tables do. However, pivot tables are a much quicker way of doing it and they're a lot easier to manipulate. So what we'll do is I'll take you through a pivot table and it will be mainly the basics rather than everything that you can do with them because there is so much that you can do with them. And then we'll move on to how to generate a pivot chart from a pivot table. Okay, now one of the other benefits of a pivot table is that it is live. So if I change the data that feeds into the pivot table, it will change or it will automatically update itself. Now there are occasions where it doesn't do that, in which case you can just right click on the table and click refresh. So let me show you how to create one and then we'll look at how to manipulate the data that we include in there. So to start off with, you want to select the entire table with all the data that you want to potentially put into the pivot table. So it's not that we have to include everything in there when we actually get to the design phase, but if it may be in there, then let's include it. So we can do this in two ways. We can either drag across our entire table like so, or if you want a quicker way of doing it, we can again, let's just go back to cell A1, and we could do control A, and that will select the entire table. We then go to insert at the top, and we want to click pivot table. So this will bring up this screen here. Now we can either choose to enter our pivot table in the same sheet that we're working on, in which case if we do that, we just need to select the cell in which it starts in. However, we don't want to do that generally we'll generally put it into a new worksheet so let's go back click on new worksheet and click ok now this creates a new worksheet as expected and let's firstly zoom in a little bit just so we can see this a bit easier okay so we can see that we've now got a blank pivot table on the left hand side and we've got this new section on the right hand side which says pivot table fields and we've also got two new tabs at the top where we've got pivot table analyze and we've got design now we're currently on pivot table analyze so we can see the sort of things that are included here and then design is obviously how it looks but there are other things in there which again we'll touch on shortly now the first thing that I want to do here is decide what do I want to include in my pivot table now this is just an example, so I'll just be picking a couple of bits out to show you how it could look. So let's say I wanted to analyze what sales had gone to each country. So what I would do is I would drag my customer country into the rows. Now you could do this into columns and I'll show you how that looks. So if I just swap that over, you can see it takes it from rows instead to column headings. Now rows generally looks a little bit neater and is easier to analyze. So I would generally go with rows, but there are times where columns could be more useful. So now that we've dragged that back into rows, let's say I want to see what our net sales are for each country. What I would do is I would take my net and I would drag that into values. And we can see what it's done is it showed us the net amount of sales, total net sales, I should say, for each country. Now, we can change this about if you want. So we can right click here and we can sort into largest to smallest. So we can see that we've got highest sales to Nigeria and lowest sales to Brazil. But if we say wanted to change that because currently it's showing the total net amount, we do have the option of changing those. So to change them, what we would do is we would come back down to values and we can see at the minute it states sum of net. Now we can right click on that and we can go to field settings and that will bring up our different options. So we could change that to count. 
So that would then tell us how many sales we'd got to each country. So rather than adding them up, it would just list the amount of sales that had happened. So let's do that now. Let's change that to count, click OK. And we can see now it's actually swapped our list around. Because we're sorting based on this column here, it has changed our list slightly. So we can see Nigeria has dropped down because they've only got 19 sales to Nigeria rather than 20 to Japan. So what that clearly means then is that we've sold a higher number of higher price items to Nigeria than we have to Japan. Now, what we could also do is we could change that to average. So we go back to field settings, click on average, and that will give us the average amount of sales to each country. Now we see that's a little bit messy at the moment. So what we could do, highlight these, and we could go to home, and we can drop those down as we would like any other figure. So we can see now that the average net sales, the highest is Colombia. So we might not sell as much to Colombia, but what we do sell is higher price items. Now, something else that we could do if we wanted to as well, is we could use that same data and show it both as average and as count. So the way that we would do that is we can actually go back and we could drag that yet again into values and this time it adds another column on. And again, we've got the same options where we could change that to say the count, we could leave it as sum. Obviously we already have the average as well. Now we're currently still sorting on column B, but again, if we wanted to, we could change that and sort to column C. So it puts them in the highest to lowest in terms of the net amounts. So we can see that we've got multiple options of how we want to manipulate data and there are other things that you can do that are a little bit more complex that I'm not going to run through in this video. This is just the basics of how to work a pivot table, how to create one and how to manipulate them. Now, what we could also do is we could drop a filter on there as well. So we could say, let's drop the continent in. And then we could change it to, to say, okay, well, I only want to see sales from, let's say Europe. So we select Europe and it will only show the sales from Europe. So it's a really quick way of manipulating data and being able to visualize it in an easy way. So what I'm going to show you now is how to do a pivot chart based upon this data. So I'm going to show you this in a pie chart. So what I need to do first is just drop off this sum of net. Okay, because we can't have two variables for a pie chart. So all we do now is go up to pivot table and analyze. And then we hit pivot chart. Now it will automatically create this as a bar chart, but we've got the option if we want to of changing this into whatever chart we want. So if we go back to design and then we go to change chart type, we can change this to a pie chart, which I think is a little bit easier represented for this sort of thing. But if we say want to add the data labels or change the chart style, we've got those options as well. So we could go to add chart element and we could say data labels. And we could say either best fit inside or outside. So I'm going to go outside so we can see we've got the data labels now for each segment. If we want to change how it looks, we've got some preset styles as well that Again, they can be really handy. It's not something I tend to use too much, but there are a couple of nice looking ones in there. We can also change the title if we want as well by double clicking within our title box, and then we can just type in. So we could change this, let's say from total to something like sales by country, which is probably a more fitting title. We can drag segments out as well if we wanted to. So we can see now there's a gap in between each one. We could also hover over them as I'm doing now and that shows you the percentage of sales as well. And again, all that is because it's feeding from our pivot table. So it has all that information and this is just a representation of what we're showing in our table. So what that means is if we were to change our pivot table, it would also change our pivot chart. So just something to bear in mind. If we want to change, say, the color of a segment, we can click on it 
and that will highlight all segments. We can click again, go to our home, and then change the color. So let's say I want to change that to, I don't know, red. We can change it to red. We can also see on the right hand side here, we've got something that says angle of first slice. Now, if I wanted to rotate the pie chart, we can start rotating it by clicking on the up arrow, or we can just use the slider and that will rotate the chart just in case I want to manipulate a certain segment into a certain place. We can change how much it's exploded. So because I've only selected one piece, that's just bringing the one piece back in. So let me just drag that back out. Whereas if I selected all of them, so just go off, click again, and then we can lower this down, it will bring them all back together. So like I said, this is just an overview for how you create a pivot table and pivot chart. Really, if you go in and just play around with these, you can learn them really, really quickly and what you can do with them. But I just wanted to give you an idea of the types of things that you can use them for. But hopefully you found that useful and it's given you a good idea of where to start. And that wraps up this video on pivot tables and pivot charts. I hope you found it useful. And remember, if you have, to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more accounting videos. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.